All right, we are on the record. It's 9.02 a.m. Monday, May 3rd, 2021. If I could have the counsel for parties, please put your appearance on record. Taylor Mount, on behalf of the Office of the State Attorney. Tyler Brands, on behalf of the Office of Public Defender. Letitia George, on behalf of the Office of the Public Defender. Hold on. I'm not ready yet. Please tell me your name. James LeBlanc. You're here in 21MM206480, charged with violation of a domestic violence injunction. I'm going to appoint the Public Defender's Office to represent you at this time. Yeah. This is an arraignment. Um, your Honor, I'll enter a plea of not guilty. Division 50, your pretrial date would be May 24th at 1.30 in courtroom 7C. Good luck. Please tell me your name. Harrison Fernley. You're here in 21MM296580, charged with battery domestic violence. I'm going to appoint the Public Defender's Office to represent you. Your Honor, may we request uh, ROR with no contact with the victim? Alleged victim. Your Honor, this is a battery DV. State would object to an ROR. Right. Why would we ROR him? Uh, the uh, Mr. Fearnley doesn't have any previous criminal history that I see on record. There was a former injunction that had been dissolved, and uh, I, I request ROR with no contact with the alleged victim. So it would be a non-monetary bond. Your Honor, right. in the alternative, it shows that he was not interviewed for um, pre-trial release. So we would just ask that he is interviewed, and if he qualifies, if you're not inclined to grant the ROR, um, that you allow him to be interviewed for pre-trial release, and if he qualifies, he'd be placed on pre-trial release, Your Honor. Do we know why he wasn't interviewed? All right. Um, what I'll do is I'll authorize pre-trial release if he qualifies. Alternatively, your bond is $500. Whether you're on pretrial release or out on bond, your conditions will be the same. You're not allowed to have any contact with the victim. Do you understand what no contact means? Yes, you are. You're not allowed to possess a weapon of any kind, firearm, or ammunition. I'll order that you must maintain a separate residence. I'll allow one-time return with law enforcement to gather your belongings, but you may not coordinate that through the victim. Do you understand? Are there any other conditions the state would request? No, Your Honor. All right, good luck. And there is probable cause. I don't think I said that. There's nothing. That threw me off. I don't know why that's over there. Please tell me your name. Jamar Jarvis. You're here in 21MM29488, charged with battery domestic violence. There is probable cause, and I'll appoint the public defender's office to represent you. At this time, your bond will be $500. You're not allowed to have any contact with the victim. Do you understand what no contact means? Oh, yes, ma'am. All right, you can't call on the phone, send a text message. You can't send a message through friends or family. No contact at all. You're not allowed to possess a weapon of any kind, firearm, or ammunition. You're not allowed to possess or consume any controlled substance without a valid prescription, and you'll be subject to random drug screens. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Um... I can't go for five hundred dollars right now. I don't have four hundred dollars. All right, you're gonna have to talk to your attorney, and then you can talk to a bondsman about that. Yeah. You're also hold on. Let me let me just finish this. I'm going to order that you must maintain a separate residence, and I'll allow a one-time return with law enforcement to gather your belongings, but you cannot coordinate that visit through the victim. Do you understand that? <sighs> Do you understand what I'm telling you? Yes, ma'am. All right. Yes, Miss George, you wish to be heard. Yeah, I believe there may be. Um, I can't. It shows a history of mental health issues, um, and I see that he was not interviewed also in this case, so maybe if he can be interviewed um, and see if he qualifies for pretrial release, and if he doesn't, then in the alternative, um, 
the $500 bond, Your Honor? Your Honor, I don't believe he'd qualify for PTR, um, given his history and given the extensive bad DV history with the same victim. Do we know why he wasn't interviewed? He what? Oh, he was in another area? Yeah, and he has a history of mental health issues, so I would just ask that he is screened. Can we have him screened for mental health pretrial release? If you qualify for pretrial release, I will authorize it, but if you don't, your bond stays at $500. All of the same conditions apply. Do you understand? Thank you, ma'am. Yes, sir. Good luck. I thought you were going to hand it to me. Please tell me your name. Smith. 21MM294580. You're here charged with battery domestic violence. There is probable cause, and I'll appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Ma'am, do you wish to testify? Um, I would like to have contact with... Okay, hold on. If you want to testify, I need you to raise your right hand to be sworn. Do you swear for the testimony about to give? Should be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Please state your name for the record. It's about your last name. Tanya Smith, S-M-I-T-H. All right, at this time, I'm going to have the prosecutor ask you some questions. Go ahead. Good morning, ma'am. Can you please state your relationship to Mr. Smith? Why? Um, are you afraid of him? No. Would Wait, like what did she say was the relationship? His wife. Wife. I'm sorry. I couldn't hear that. Thank you. Um, would you like to have contact with him? Yes. Were drugs or alcohol involved in this incident? Alcohol? Has anything like this ever happened before? Uh, no. Oh. Uh, that's all I have, Your Honor. Does the defense wish to inquire? No question. Oh. All right. We do, um, if we can request, um, ROR with no hostile contact. The um, Mr. Smith is employed 22 years with the same employer, has no uh, criminal history as a veteran from the Marine Corps. Uh, further, the uh, pretrial services did not have a chance to interview uh, Mr. Smith, so if you would consider that as... Uh, in your order? Your Honor, again, state would object to ROR. This is a violent offense. Even given the victim's testimony that she wants contact with him, state would object. All right, at this time, what I'm going to do is ask that he be interviewed for pretrial release. If he qualifies, I'll authorize that. Otherwise, your bond is, he what? So he will? All right, I'll place you on pretrial release. With special conditions, you're not allowed to have any contact with the victim at this time. Do you understand what no contact means? You're not allowed to possess a weapon of any kind, firearm, or ammunition. I'll order you must maintain a separate residence. I'll allow a one-time return with law enforcement to gather your belongings. You're not allowed to possess or consume alcoholic beverages, and you'll be subject to random alcohol screens. Are there any other conditions the state would request? No, Your Honor. All right, good luck, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Good luck. Good morning, Your Honor. This is Laura Royo, State Certified Interpreter, already previously sworn. Uh, good morning. If you could please connect to the headset. Yes. Hello. Please tell me your name. Sí. No, no escuché. Que indique mi nombre. Claudia Araya. Claudia Araya. Oh, thank you. This is 21MM295380. You're here charged with battery. I'm going to appoint the public defender's office to represent you. There is probable cause in this case. Does the state ob object to pretrial release? No, Your Honor. Perdón? All right. At this time, I'm going to place you on pretrial release. With special conditions, you're not allowed to have any contact with the victim. Do you understand what no contact means? Sí. Yes. You're not allowed to possess a weapon of any kind, firearm, or ammunition. I'll order you must maintain a separate residence. I'll allow one time return with law enforcement to gather your belongings. 
Are there any other conditions the state would request? Alcohol, Your Honor. You're not allowed to possess or consume alcoholic beverages and you'll be subject to random alcohol screens. Do you understand? Okay. Good luck, ma'am. Okay. Tengo que firmar. Yo tengo que firmar a juro la orden de prohibición de contacto. I, I have to sign this no contact order. Yes, you do. Good luck. And I should have asked this sooner, B. Do we have his client coming in sometime soon? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't even think about that earlier. Okay. Please tell me your name. Angel Figueroa. Angel Figueroa. 21MM296280. You're here charged with battery domestic violence. There is probable cause, and I'll appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Does the state object to pretrial release? Could you repeat that for me again? I was asking the prosecutor if they object to pretrial release. No, Your Honor, as he otherwise qualifies, and there's no victim input here today. All right, at this time, I'm going to place you on pretrial release. With special conditions, you're not allowed to have any contact with the victim. Do you understand what no contact means? Sí, entendido. Yes, understood. You're not allowed to possess a weapon of any kind, firearm, or ammunition. You must maintain a separate residence from the victim. You may not live together. I will allow you to return one time with law enforcement to gather your belongings. Any other conditions the state would request? No, Your Honor. Good luck, sir. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. All right, just, yeah, yeah, let's just, I, I don't know, ask me that at the end. Let's see how long this takes. Oh, okay. Thanks. All right, please tell me your name. Giovanni Vasquez. Giovanni Vasquez. Uh -huh. 21MM261AW, you're here charged with battery domestic violence. There is probable cause, and I'll appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Okay. Okay. What says the state has to pretrial release? Your Honor, I have no objection, given we don't have victim input, and he otherwise qualifies. His last conviction was a violation of probation, and possibly on an aggravated battery with great bodily harm. Yes, Your Honor, I see that. It was approximately three years ago. Um, and given the facts in this case, I don't believe it'd be appropriate to give him bond at this time. Your Honor. At this time, I'm going to place you on pretrial release with special conditions. You may not have any contact with the victim. Do you understand that? Okay. Okay. You're not allowed to possess a weapon of any kind, firearm, or ammunition. You may not live in the same residence. You must maintain a separate residence. Do you understand that? Okay. Okay, very well. I'll allow you to return one time with law enforcement to gather your belongings. Good luck, sir. Gracias. Thank you. Is 
Is that all we need from the Spanish interpreter at this time? Yes, you are. All right, thank you for your service this morning. You're welcome, Your Honor. I will disconnect. All right, good morning, counsel. If you want to put your appearance and call the case. Yes, Judge. For the record, Jack Coleta on behalf of Victor Gonzalez. Uh, Mr. Gonzalez is standing to my left in case number 2021 CF4853. Sir, you're here because a warrant was issued for your arrest charging you with kidnapping and battery. Another judge has already found probable cause in this case. And Judge, it was no bond till first appearance and notwithstanding the designation of the charge, Your Honor, I would ask the court to set a bond. Uh, Mr. Gonzalez voluntarily turned himself in last night after learning of the warrant. He did voluntarily give a statement to the police. The victim went to his house uh, where she was a, I don't know if I'd call her a resident, but she was a girlfriend. She was there quite regularly to retrieve her belongings. Um, this was not a, a situation where, again, although it's designated as a kidnapping, they were um, on their way to Miami. They went to International Drive. Uh, our position is that the victim got incomprehensibly drunk, attempted to jump out of the vehicle while it was moving, and I think at one point actually did so. Um, so it, it's not a, a situation where Mr. Gonzalez is charged with or alleged to have uh, snatch somebody off the street. They, they have a very, um, very familiar relationship. Mr. Gonzalez has never been arrested on any felonies. He's never been convicted of anything that I know of. Um, I don't think a criminal history showed any any convictions. He has local ties to the community. He's lived here for 15 years. He has a mother. He has sisters, brothers, all in Central Florida. He's got two children, six and eight, two sons who attend Baldwin Park Elementary. And I think the state is objecting, but. Judge, I would suggest to the court that a, a, certainly a $20,000 bond would ensure his appearance. We have no problem with no contact whatsoever. All right. Thank you, Counselor. Uh, what says the state? Your Honor, given that it is a PBL, state is asking that you hold him no bond. Um, according to the affidavit, they were at a lounge, um, left, went to the parking lot, got into the vehicle. They had a scuffle over the victim's phone, over possibly alleged cheating. Um, the victim said that he started punching her in the face and pulling her hair. She demanded to be taken home. He did not take her home. He took her to a hotel. Um, and she believes that she was punched again while driving. So she tried to jump out of the vehicle. She successfully jumped out of the vehicle where the defendant helped her get back into the vehicle. Um, so I think it is appropriate to be for him to be held no bond pending an ARTA hearing. Um, the victim was able to eventually get out of the vehicle and run away and make contact with a family member. A judge, and my response again is that, uh, you know, Mr. Gonzalez is employed full time as a pharmacy tech. He works for Walgreens. Uh, the victim, by all accounts, was incomprehensibly drunk. She had her bag packed. They were headed to Miami. This is this is not a kidnapping. So. Counselor, I understand your argument, and I, I might even agree with some of your arguments, but because the charge is he was arrested on a kidnapping and it is punishable by life, I think the state is right. I, I think I'm bound. I can't give him a bond until we do an Arthur hearing. Well, Judge, so, even on a PBL, the court has discretion to set a bond um, without the Arthur hearing. I think we have to do the Arthur hearing for me to do that. No, Judge, I don't, I don't have the affidavit. I just, I don't have it. I'd be happy to. Does anyone have any case law that says that the court can grant bond on a punishable by life offense without an Arthur hearing? No, Your Honor, I do not. Judge, I don't have it with me, Your Honor. Um, I did anticipate the court would set a bond because of the nature of the facts. Um, the, the, the rule provides that the court has the discretion to set a bond. I understand that the Arthur hearing uh, is uh, one of the means available. However, uh, the court does have the benefit, I think, of the complaint. Uh, and um, the court can make its own evaluation of the facts without having to have Mr. Gonzalez held in custody. Right now, as the court's well aware, it's very difficult to get hearings. Now, Your Honor, I believe at IAs you can, in fact, um, wait, wait, I can't hear you. Can you? I believe that at IAs you can, in fact, set bond without an Arthur hearing based on the evidence that is presented. 
Um, and I was trying to pull up the case law for you um, with regards to that. But again, it's in your discretion, Your Honor. If you find that case law, can you email it to me? I'm going to take a short recess yes. and look at this myself. And then we'll be back in, I don't know, maybe five, ten minutes. Very good. Thank you, Jeff. All right. Thank you. All right, thank you all for your patience. We are back on the record at 9.37 a.m. Yes, this is still case number 21 CF 4853. Judge, I was able during the break to uh, read the affidavit and I, I would suggest to the court that my position is bolstered even more than before. The officer who responded observed no injuries with, uh, that were consistent with being punched. The victim indicated she thinks she was punched, but she's not sure. The timeline is way off and probably the most significant factor as I'm reading through that affidavit, is, the, is the, um, the fact that she was, by her own account, left in the vehicle alone while Mr. Gonzalez went to the hotel to try to get a room. She was free to uh, um, escape. She did not. Judge, regarding the issue uh, of bond, and I, I went through and I, I looked at Arthur again, and the, the significant point on Arthur is that even if the court finds that proof of guilt is evident, presumption great, the court still has discretion at that point to grant a bond. I don't, I, I, obviously for a number of reasons we can't do an Arthur hearing today, but I, I um, would suggest that in the absence of that, the court could obviously grant a bond. So. Thank you, Counselor. Uh, anything else from the state? Uh, you're on, well, are, are you doing argument or are you inclined to grant a bond? Because if you're inclined to grant a bond, I just want to put a few things on the record. I'm sorry, I couldn't really understand you. Sorry. Um, you can sit for a moment. I know, I appreciate that you're standing. That is appropriate etiquette, but it's hard for me to hear you. So I can um, hear him because he's right at the microphone standing. Yes, Your Honor. Um, just in regards to if you are inclined to set a bond, I just have a, f a few more things to put on the record, Your Honor. Uh, yes, go ahead. Uh, for kidnapping, the jury instruction, the state must prove three elements. That if the defendant forcibly, secretly, by threat, confined, abducted, or imprisoned, the victim, the victim against her will had no lawful authority to do so and acted with the intent, in this case, to inflict bodily harm or terrorize the victim. Um, this case begins at, it looks about 3 a.m. They are leaving a hookah and cigar lounge. Uh, the victim describes the defendant seeing a text on her phone that he does not recognize the number. He takes it from her, begins going through it, punches her in the face, uh, she demands to be taken home. He refuses to take her home. He even accounts for that when the law enforcement officer speaks to him, that he knows that she wants to go home. He does not take her home. They drive to a hotel. She, the only time that she is unsure whether or not she was hit was during that process of driving. Um, she said she is unsure. She is punched in the face while driving, and then she jumps from the vehicle. She begins running, falls in the grass, and then the Defendant puts her back into the vehicle, and then they eventually drive to another parking lot, and he begins striking her again. And that time, she is able to get away. The defense has stated that she, I believe by their account, that she was blackout drunk. Um, in the affidavit, the victim does admit to having drinks. However, when asked if she was blackout drunk, she replies no. The law enforcement officer made no independent in, um, findings whether or not she had been drinking. He makes no observations about her stumbling or anything that would indicate that she was impaired. Um, again, I'd point to it was 3 a.m., so it is very, very likely that the defendant was also drinking. But again, there are no independent findings from the officer in this 
affidavit whether either of them were drinking. The victim, the next morning when she was met with the detective, says that she was scared for her life and believed she was kidnapped. She was very emotional. Um, and the law enforcement officer says the morning after he notices injuries to her arms, legs, and feet, all consistent with being battered and jumping from a moving vehicle. The victim at that time also applies for an temporary injunction. Uh, during all of this, also the defendant calls the number that was on the victim's phone. A male answers, the victim yells to call police, and the defendant hangs up the phone, causing the male on the phone to call law enforcement for a wellness check on the victim. Right. Um, oh, and lastly, due to the defendant's own account, he admits to a tussle over the phone. He admits to knowing that she wants to be taken home. He does not take her home. And he admits to things got crazy, um, which I think would all point to corroborating the victim's story to an extent. Um, but I think the phone call to the the male that was on the phone that arguably started this whole issue where the victim yelled, call the police, and the defendant hung up the phone, causing the male on the phone to worry about the victim's safety, would also point to that this potentially was an actual kidnapping situation and would prove those three elements that I previously said out loud. And Judge, I don't... All right, thank you. Yes, sir? I don't want to repeat myself, but... The things in the affidavit that jumped out at me are that there was no injuries consistent with her being punched. Apparently, she's alleging she was punched a number of times. The only injuries are her jumping out of the vehicle. My, my client conceded to the officers. It got crazy. She tried to jump out of a moving car and ultimately did so. I mean, I don't know. He, he's trying to stop her from doing that. Tussling over a phone is not a kidnapping. Your Honor, I would argue a victim jumping out of a vehicle would show that she had... She believed that she was being forcefully, by threat, confined against her will. If she had to feel that she had to resort to jumping out of a vehicle. And, and that was before they were at the hotel and she sat in the car by herself. Also, her timeline is off by an hour and 45 minutes as far as how long this thing took. So, Judge, I, I think it would be an injustice not to grant Mr. Gonzalez a bond. All right. So, I understand the arguments of both sides. At this time, I am inclined to grant bond. I know the state objects to bond of any kind. Do you have a specific objection to the defense's number of $20,000? Yes, Your Honor. I believe it's incredibly low given that this is a first degree felony and a punishable life felony. And I'm looking at his criminal history, and I show that he has three prior battery arrests. Are, but are there any convictions? Judge, our position is he has no convictions, and those did not involve this lady. I'm just wondering if the state has any... All I show is three battery arrests. I have a battery DV from 2018 that was dropped. Do you know the victim? I have. Does it have the victim's name? Uh, I just want to know if it's the same victim. I don't, I don't need to know the victim's name. Um, one second, Your Honor. I'm sorry. Judge, while they're doing that, the issue of the monetary amount of the bond in light of Mr. Gonzalez's lack of prior record and his work history, his family history, his, his, excuse me, his family history, his ties to the community, um, I, I think 20 is ample, and we have no problem with the no contact. It's Thank you. In that case, Your Honor, it's Ms. Fulcher. I see a 27 repeat violent injunction a 17 battery DV from Seminole that was dropped. And then a 2011 battery DV that was dropped from Seminole. 2009 battery DV from Seminole that was dropped. Another 2009 battery DV that was dropped. All right, thank you. 
All right, sir. Uh, thank you both attorneys. I appreciate your arguments. Mr. Gonzalez, as I told you, another judge has already found probable cause in this offense for these offenses. On count one, your bond is going to be $50,000. On count two, your bond is $100. You're not allowed to have any contact with the victim. Do you understand what no contact means? You can't call her on the phone. You can't send a text message. You can't contact her through friends or family or social media. You understand that? You can't possess a weapon of any kind, firearm or ammunition. You're not allowed to possess or consume alcoholic beverages or controlled substances without a valid prescription. You'll be subject to both random drug and alcohol screens while released. Do you understand that? You're not allowed to be within 500 feet of the victim's residence. Do you understand? You're not allowed to return to the Royal Hookah and Cigar Lounge for any reason. Are there any other conditions of state or request? No, Your Honor. All right, good luck, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Yes, thank you, Counselor. Please tell me your name. Yeah, your arms. Did you say Grimes? Yes, ma'am. All right. This is 21 CF 507580. You're here charged with aggravated battery on a pregnant person, domestic violence, and burglary of a dwelling with assault or battery. There is probable cause, and I'll appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Ma'am, do you wish to testify here today? Mm -hmm. Did you say no? No. Okay, thank you. Your Honor, given count two, stay would ask for uh, no bond pending an Arthur hearing. All right, I agree with the state. At this time, your bond will be $5,000 on count one. You'll have no bond on count two pending an Arthur hearing. But even while in custody, you may not have any contact with the victim. Do you understand what no contact means? You're not allowed to possess a weapon of any kind, firearm, or ammunition. Were you two living together? Yeah. For a little. I can't hear you. For a little bit. All right, you're not allowed to do that at this time. I'll order you must maintain a separate residence and I'll allow one time return with law enforcement to gather your belongings. Any other conditions the state would request? No, Your Honor. Good luck, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Please tell me your name. The Angel Gutierrez Jr. 21 CF 5068 AO. You're here charged with tampering with a witness to hinder communication to law enforcement. There is probable cause. Your bond is $1,000. You're not allowed to have any contact with the victim. Do you understand what no contact means? Yes, ma'am. All right. In 21 CF 5070, you're charged with aggravated battery domestic violence. I'm going to appoint the public defender's office to represent you. State, what is the aggravation in this case? What's the aggravated battery? I believe it was the injury sustained, Your Honor. All right, is it, it's great bodily harm? Yes, Your Honor. I don't believe there was a weapon or anything, or the victim was allegedly pregnant. All right, I'll find there's probable cause in this case. I'll appoint the public defender's office to represent you. You're not allowed to have any contact with the victim. Do you understand what no contact means? Yes, ma'am. You're also not allowed to have any unsupervised contact with any minor child under the age of 18. Do you understand? That means I can't be around my son? Not unsupervised. So if my mom's there, it's good? No. You're going to have to comply with any plan set in place by DCF because he was a witness to this.
So it'll have to be someone designated by DCF. Um. Your Honor. Yes. Can we have a moment, Ms. George, going through the affidavit? Yes. We, we weren't able to access it this morning. There was a weird filing error in our computer. Okay. Just one moment, please. Thank you. Your Honor, um, based on what I'm reading, and this is me doing it very quickly, um, I see that there was a um, contusion on the temple. However, I believe for an aggravated um, battery, it, great bodily harm, it must be more than the normal um, type of injury. So any bruises that would come from hitting, punching, um, any type of normal domestic battery case, it has to rise to a level of great bodily harm, permanent disfigurement, and um, bruising on the temple. I would argue, Your Honor, does not rise to the level of great bodily harm. Um, I don't see anywhere in the rest affidavit uh, that states, other than the bruising on the temple, that she had serious um, injuries that would rise to that level of... Um... Your Honor, a contusion is not a bruise. It is like ruptured blood vessels. And given the nature of where it's at on her temple, I would argue that it is great bodily harm. All right, we're gonna pull up the statute. 784.045, a person commits aggravated battery who, in committing the battery intentionally or knowingly, causes great bodily harm, permanent disability, or permanent disfigurement, or uses a deadly weapon. Right. I don't see any disfigurement, Your Honor. Even if there is a, a bruise on the temple, contusion, um, I would argue that doesn't rise to the level of great bodily harm. Um, I don't trying to see if there was anything from the hospital that it was serious enough to rise to that level. And I don't see anything in the arrest affidavit that would say that. Within the four corners of the arrest affidavit, Your Honor. So I was reading, in, in reading it, Counselor, here's where I was assuming the great bodily harm comes from. Contusion, she blacked out for several seconds. Okay, see, I, I didn't see that. It's later. Oh. There's a couple places where it talks about it. So it's you may be right. I don't know. Yeah, I don't Case know. law may say that this contusion won't get beyond a reasonable doubt for great bodily harm, but I'm thinking for probable cause, it gets over that hurdle. Okay. Right. But I, you may have a point I don't know if the state can sustain this to a jury verdict. Okay, thank you. I believe the line um, Judge Gibson is referring to is punched her three times in her right temple with his fist. Ms. Latham stated that she blacked out for a second after the second punch and then ran outside for help after she came back to. And then I think, of course, your colleagues at the Public Defender's Office will want to look at the medical records when you get them in discovery. Correct. But yes, I think it's sufficient just for probable cause at this time. So your bond on count one will be $5,000. You're not allowed to have any contact with the victim. You must maintain a separate residence. You're not allowed to possess a weapon of any kind, firearm or ammunition. I'll allow one time return with law enforcement to gather your belongings, but you cannot coordinate that with the victim. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Can, uh, can I send my relatives to go get it? Because I don't want to see her no more. You can do that. I, I, you just can't send a message to her through them. I, I'm not trying to do none of that. Right. Don't, don't talk to her through them. Yes, but yes, you can send someone. We're here anymore. Yes. yes. All right. Thank you. Wait. Were there any other conditions of state requests? No, Your Honor. You still have the no contact, no, no right. unsupervised contact. No, Your Honor. That's right. right. Yes. Good luck. Yeah, he's he's going to coordinate it through family, but I'm still going to allow him to do it if he can't get them to do it. Please tell me your name. 
Antoine Ramon Hubley. You're here because a warrant was issued for your arrest in 21 CF 465980, charging you with tampering with a witness to hinder communication to law enforcement, battery dating violence, and burglary of a conveyance. Another judge has already found probable cause, and I'll appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Your bond will be... $500 on count one, $100 on count two, and $2,500 on count three. You're not allowed to have any contact with the victim. Do you understand what no contact means? Yes, ma'am. You're not allowed to possess a weapon of any kind, firearm, or ammunition. Were you two living together? No. All right. Then I'll order that you must maintain a separate residence, and you're not allowed to return to the victim's residence for any reason. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Any other conditions the state would request? No, Your Honor. All right, good luck, sir. Please tell me your name. Mani Sarmast. 21 CF 507780. You're here charged with criminal mischief, petty theft, false imprisonment, dating violence, battery dating violence, and committing battery by strangulation, domestic. Your Honor. I'm going, hold on. Let me appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Did you wish to be heard, Counselor? Your Honor, can the state show the facts that would uh, establish probable cause for the battery domestic by strangulation? Yes. He grabbed her around the neck for several seconds and then let go. She advised she could not breathe while her hands were around her neck. That's in the second paragraph. Thank you, Your Honor. At this time, I find there is probable cause. Your bond will be $100 on count one, $100 on count two, 150 on count three, 100 on count four, and 5,000 on count five. You're not allowed to have any contact with the victim. Do you understand what no contact means? Yes. You're not allowed to possess a weapon of any kind, firearm or ammunition. You must maintain a separate residence. Was she living there? No. All right. I'm ordering you maintain a separate residence. I'll allow one time return with law enforcement to gather your belongings because if she's living there, you cannot. She, but if she's not, you can. She's a college student. We both live with our own parents. Okay. Any other conditions the state would request? No, Your Honor. Good luck, sir. Please tell me your name. Anthony Taylor. All right, in 21MM26080, you're here charged with battery dating violence. There is probable cause, and I'll appoint the public defender's office. Your bond in that case will be $500. You're not allowed to have any contact with the victim. Do you understand what no contact means? Yes, ma'am. You do? Yes. All right, you can't possess a weapon of any kind, firearm, or ammunition. Were you two living together? You can't at this time. I'll order you must maintain a separate residence and allow one time return with law enforcement to gather your belongings. In case 21 CF 505580, you're here charged with burglary of an occupied dwelling with assault or battery and battery. I'll appoint the public defender's office to represent you in this case as well. There is probable cause. Ms. May, did you wish to be heard? Yes, Your Honor. Ask the count one being a PBL, state would ask that you hold them no bond pending an Arthur hearing. I will do that at this time, but your bond on count two is $500. So you have no bond on count one, bond is 500 on count two. Count one is an offense punishable by life in prison. So at this time, I'm not going to authorize a bond. Your attorney can file a motion in front of the trial judge. But even while you're in custody, you can't have any contact with the victim, you understand? On count two, you're not allowed to possess a weapon of any kind, firearm or ammunition. I'll order you must maintain a separate residence. I'll allow one time return with law enforcement to gather your belongings. Good luck, sir.
Please tell me your name. Christopher Jim McCormack. 21 MM 78 AE. You're here charged with battery. There is probable cause and I'll appoint the public defender's office. Ma'am, do you wish to testify? Yes. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear from the testimony you're about to give should be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Please state your name for the record and spell your last name. Rebecca McCormack, M-C-C-O-R-M-A-C-K. State, you may inquire. Good morning, Ms. McCormick. Can you please state your relationship to Mr. McCormick? His wife. I'm sorry? Wife. Okay. Uh, approximately how long have you known him? Uh, six to seven years. Has anything like this ever happened before? No. Are you afraid of him? No. If he were to be released from custody today, would you be afraid of him? No. Do you want to have contact with him? Absolutely. Were drugs or alcohol involved in this incident? No. And if anything like this ever occurred in the future, would you feel comfortable calling 911? Yes. That's all I have, Your Honor. Does the defense wish to inquire? Yes. Uh, good morning, ma'am. Um, may I ask, do you and Mr. McCormick have any children together? No. Thank you. No more questions. All right. Thank you. He qualifies for pretrial release. Any objection from the state? No, Your Honor. Um, due to him otherwise qualifying and the testimony from the victim here today. All right, at this time, I'm going to place you on pretrial release with special conditions. You're not allowed to have any contact with the victim. Do you understand what no contact means? Yes. All right, you're not allowed to possess a weapon of any kind, firearm, or ammunition. I'm going to order you must maintain a separate residence and allow you one time return with law enforcement to gather your belongings, but you cannot coordinate that visit with her. You understand? Did you say yes? Are there any other conditions the state would request? No, Your Honor. All right, good luck, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Please tell me your name. Dakota McFadden. 21MM294780. You're here charged with battery domestic violence. There is probable cause, and I'll appoint the public defender's office to represent you. She qualifies for pre trial release. Any objection by the state? No, Your Honor. As she otherwise qualifies, and we don't have victim input here today. All right, at this time, I'm going to place you on pre trial release. With special conditions, you're not allowed to have any contact with the victim. Do you understand what no contact means? Yes. Your Honor, I believe. The officer only filed one count of battery DV when arguably there could have been two. So I know, I thought that too, but it's not charged. Yes, Your Honor. So I just asked for also no contact with witnesses as they are also technically victims. All right, I'm going to order that you're not allowed to have any contact with Ms. Chupp or Ms. Narayson. Do you understand? Yes. I'll order you must maintain a separate residence and allow one time return with law enforcement to gather your belongings. You're not allowed to possess a weapon of any kind, firearm or ammunition. Do you understand? Yes. Were you living there? No. Okay, so that should be easy then. Your Honor, our state would request alcohol um, due to the allegation of alcohol and the allegation of drinking while driving. All right, you're not allowed to possess or consume alcoholic beverages and you'll be subject to random alcohol screens. You understand? Yes. All right, good luck. Thank you. Please tell me your name. Sierra. McCray. Sorry. 21MM29518. You're here charged with battery domestic violence. I'll appoint the public defender's office to represent you. There is probable cause in this case. Any objection to pretrial release? No, Your Honor, as she otherwise qualifies and we don't have victim input here today. All right, at this time I'm going to place you on pretrial release with special conditions. You're not allowed to have any contact with the victim. Do you understand what no contact means? Yes, ma'am. Were you two living in the same house? No, ma'am. All right. I'll order you're not allowed to return to her residence. You're not allowed to possess a weapon of any kind, firearm, or ammunition.
Any other conditions the state would request? No, Your Honor. All right, good luck, ma'am. Please tell me your name. Michelle Ferracino. 21MM296480. You're here charged with battery domestic violence. There is probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Do you wish to testify, sir? Yes, ma'am. Please raise your right hand to be sworn. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony about to give should be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. Please state your name for the record and spell your last name. Daniel Perichino, P E R I C H I N O. State, you may inquire. Good morning, sir. Can you please state your relationship to Mrs. Perichino? She is my wife. Okay. Approximately how long have you known her? Uh, four to five years. Has anything like this ever happened before? No. If anything like this ever occurred in the future, would you feel comfortable calling 911? Yes. Do you want to have contact with her? Very, very, very much so. Yes, ma'am. Are you afraid of her? Not at all, ma'am. If she were to be released from custody today, would you be afraid of her? Absolutely not. And were drugs or alcohol involved in this incident? Very small amount of alcohol. Alcohol? Yep. Thank you. That's all I have, Your Honor. Defense? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, good morning, sir. Do you, Ms. Pericino, have any children together? Oh, no, sir. No more questions. All right, at this time, I'm going to place you on pretrial release. Pretrial release with special conditions based on the testimony here today, I'm going to allow you to have contact with your husband. But do you understand what peaceful contact means? Yes, yes ma'am. No hostile contact. Don't even raise your voice, you understand? Yes, ma'am. You're not allowed to possess a weapon of any kind, firearm or ammunition. You're not allowed to possess or consume alcoholic beverages and you'll be subject to random alcohol screens. I will allow you to return to the home based on the testimony I heard today. Any other conditions the state would request? No, Your Honor. Good luck, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Who you have next, Your Honor? Brandon Daniels. He bonded. <laughs> Michael Reeder. Medical. 21 CT 2485. Uh, it's a driving while license suspended, Ms. George. I'm going to appoint your office. It's an arraignment. Oh, yes, Your Honor. Um, I'll leave and enter plea and I go. Your free trial will be in Division 80, June 24th at 9 o'clock in courtroom 9C. Thank you, sir. What? Okay, we got to do these. So, Is the state ready for 33 days? Yes, Your Honor. Can you, is your list electronic or is it paper? I, we get sent an email. Can you make your list alphabetical? I cannot. What? I can't. It comes, it's like, it's not like electronic like that. It just comes. Not a spreadsheet? No, Your Honor. Because I'd rather you call the cases, but mine are, oh, they're not alphabetical today. All right, Sometimes let's go. they're in the same order I have and sometimes they're not. So I'm, I don't really know. Sometimes I guess they print weird. Go ahead. Stanley Walker, 21MM2246. It was filed. Banker, 21CF3732. Notice and on filing. Nails, 21CF3704. It was filed. McCauley, 21CF480. Notice and on filing. Errol, 21 CF 3655, notice of non filing. Errol, 21 CF 3244, notice of non filing. Williams, 21 CF 2653, notice of non filing. Vargas, 21 CF 3668, notice of non filing. And Vargas 21 CF 3669, notice and on filing. Thank you. I think we're still waiting on the Creole interpreter. What choice do we have?
Do you have to give them back to me? Oh, they were right there. I'm oh, sorry. I didn't know they were right there. Good morning. This is Judge Gibson. Who do I have on the line? This is uh, Anne, ID number 2008574, for Haitian Creole. Good morning. Let's see if this works. Okay. We have you on the overhead speaker, not on the headset. If you could please ask him to tell me his name. Hello, bonjour. Est-ce que je vais interpréter pour là? Est-ce que capable de juger Gibson sous l'inal du dit du nol? Comment vous voulez? Oui, le haut du jeu. Comment? Oui, c'est le haut du jeu. Oui, c'est le haut du jeu. Oui. 21 CF 5062AO, you're here charged with domestic battery by strangulation. At this time, I'm going to appoint the Public Defender's Office to represent you. Your Honor. Wait, uh, just to translate that. Monsieur, I'm, I'm sorry, Your Honor. I, the phone got cut off. I, all I heard was domestic violence with strangulation. Yes, everyone, no one in the courtroom make any sound for a moment so we can hear. You're charged with ba uh, domestic battery by strangulation, and I'm going to appoint the public defender's office to represent you. You're charged with violence domestic avec étranglement. Moi pour la mettre défense publique là, avocat public là pour défendre nous. Did you wish to be heard, counselor? Yes, your honor. Est-ce que vous voulez parler et avocat oui juge. Oui. I would like to address one of the elements of the charge defense. Uh, under the jury instructions for battery by strangulation, it needs to the um, defendant needs to knowingly and intentionally impede the normal breathing or circulation of the blood of the victim against his or her will. According to the allow for translation. I, I apologize. The phone is keeping. I am not getting everything that is said. Um, Counselor, if you could sit, please, so you're closer to the microphone. Uh, this court appreciates the formality that is appropriate, but for the sound, it might be easier if you're closer. Yes, Your Honor. And, and also, Your Honor, it will be better if uh, everybody speak in shorter segment. Thank you. Understood. Is this okay? That's happening. Is this okay? Hello? Yes. Maybe do one uh, sentence. I just heard a, I just heard a buzzing sound. All right, we're going to try a different microphone. Give us one moment. Okay. Try that again, counselor. Is this okay, ma'am? Yeah, I can hear you. Yes, sir. Okay. 
Your Honor, I would like to address one of the elements of the charged crime. One of the elements is a defendant needs to knowingly and intentionally impede the normal breathing or circulation of the blood of the victim. Yuna elemayo se ke se pou defande la te eske se tout avec volonté li expre ke l'essaye tout fe moun sa pou li apeche sa moun sa sio ki le. And according to the facts set forth in the arrest affidavit, uh, even though the victim could not yell, there was no facts that suggested that the airway was impeded. Yuna na fe na arrestasyon sa a mem si ke moun na pat kare le Mais pas de gain aucun preuve qui te montre que mon na l'air l'air mon na pas de jeune l'air pour le respirer. There were also no facts to suggest uh, any marking on the throat, which also goes to the um, element of applying pressure on the throat or neck of the victim. Et pas de gain aucun marque na cou mon na qui montre que te gain aucun pression qui te fait qui te empêche l'air rentrer sorti. Therefore, I don't think probable cause has been met. Alors pour raison ça, on va penser que cause probable entre là dedans. Any response from the state of Florida? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Stay with us for 24 hours. Your Honor, I object to the 24 hours. The probable cause determination should be. Your Honor, state's entitled to 24 NIAs. I don't think she's going to get all that, guys. <laughs> No, I don't. I don't get that. I, I, uh, the interpreter has objected it 24 hours. That's it. All right. This court read the affidavit. It says. In la lire affidavit, dit que. The defendant then grabbed her by her throat with both his hands and squeezed her neck, causing her to be choked. Defendant la Kimberly avec tous les deux mains, il mettait en bas coulis, il pesait coulis, il tranglait. She stated she was choked on and off for five minutes, and she was not able to yell during that time. Les dix ans ça que pendant cinq minutes la pesait coulis. De temps en temps, et pendant cinq minutes, ça n'est pas capable de relever le bruit. I understand. The statute 784.041 sub 2A. Statute 784.041 de 1. Says a person commits domestic battery by strangulation if the person knowingly and intentionally against the will of another impedes the normal breathing or circulation of the blood of a family or household member. Dit qu'on sait que c'est un tranglement, strangulation, si on monte avec tout esprit, toute volonté, l'empêcher mon sans mon circuler, si c'est le pays et essayer de trangler un monde qui fait partie de foyer. Li. So as to create a risk of or cause great bodily harm by applying pressure on the throat or neck of the other person. Essayer pour le faire mon nom à pile mal, à peser coup mon nom, mettez pression sur coup mon nom ou bien à gauche mon nom. Counselor, this court finds that choking, squeezing her neck so that she was unable to yell is sufficient for probable cause under that statute. I'm, statute. I understand, Your Honor, but I, I don't believe this, the facts are specifically stated to say that airway was impeded or circulation of blood was impeded. Uh, I have a sore throat at times and I cannot yell, but I can continue to breathe. With someone's hands around your throat? No, or? Your Honor, but one can still breathe even if they may not be able to yell. Yelling takes a little more effort than perhaps breathing. And again, I must reiterate the facts don't specifically state that airway or blood flow was impeded according to the element of the statute. Is 
Is the interpreter able to translate that? Uh, yes, but there was a, uh, an exchange. I'm not sure. Uh, it's not going to be for Burdum. I mean, uh, okay, let me, let me try. So, Avocola dit qu'on sait que même si que on mon a abtranglé, on mon ça va vous dire que ça mon a pas circulé, l'air pas circulé. Avocola, juste là, dit que les gens que gain cause probable que mon n'a pas capable de respirer, ça mon n'a pas de cas circulé. Does, do you have any case law that says that this is insufficient to establish probable cause under the law? Est-ce que vous avez assez preuve pour montrer que ça n'a pas gagné assez de cause suffisante dans la loi? Not for PC, Your Honor. Question pour moi? Il dit non. Not for PC, Your Honor. So. Pas pour PC. I think. That's the issue, counselor. You may have a great argument for a motion to dismiss if the state can't meet their burden beyond all reasonable doubt, but I think this is sufficient for probable cause. Monsieur Antonio, avocat, il doit gagner un argument, mais si que l'État pas capable de prouver Kaiwa, mais moi quoi que ça a gagné assez, les suffisants pour cause probable. At this time, your bond will be $2,500. Pour qu'on y a ou gain bon ou pour les libertés conditionnelles ou bon à $2,500. Your, your Honor. Yes. Our client qualifies for PTR, has no criminal history, is employed part-time, and I think a more reasonable bond would be a pretrial release. Et juge, moi, quoi que le client n'a, il est qualifié pour PTA, il n'a pas pa de jambes, il n'a aucun autre dossier avant ça, et il travaille pas de temps. Moi, quoi que tu es capable de gagner un bon qui est plus amérable pour lui, pour le trial release. Does the state object? Your Honor, given, he, according to the face sheet, the defendant does work. Est-ce que l'État a une objection? Oui, d'après papier nous gagnons, il paraît que défend de la travail. And given the violent nature of the offense, coupled with the words that he was going to kill her. Et d'après violence qui était faite là, et puis mot que lui dit que la il t'a pas le tuer, madame là. I understand he otherwise qualifies, and if you are inclined to put him on PTR, state does not object, but would ask for a bond in conjunction with it. Moi, quoi que si vous le mettez dans le PTA, non pas de objection, mais il faut que vous ayez un bon qui accompagne. Your Honor, I believe that arrest affidavit also says that even though there was a verbal threat, that the alleged victim didn't take it as an actual threat to her well-being. Et juge, moi, quoi, arrestation à vie d'avis a dit, même si tu as eu un menace verbal, que la victime n'a pas de prendre ça vraiment sérieux. In addition, Your Honor, I would just add that uh, my client has no criminal history, and being that he qualifies for pretrial release. Encore, moi, t'as dit juste que le client n'a pas gagné aucun histoire criminel et il est qualifié pour pretrial release. I would ask that you place him on pretrial release. If he violates, he'll be brought back here, held at no bond, Your Honor. Je vais recommander pour mettre la pre-trial release. Si les violés, il y a pour retourner mener l'ICI et puis les salles, il n'y a pas de gagner aucun bon. At this time, I'm going to place you on pre-trial release with the following special conditions. Quand il y a un bon, il y a un pre-trial release et avec condition ça y est. You may not have any contact with the victim for any reason. Do you understand? Vous ne supposez pas prendre aucun contact du tout avec la victime pour aucune raison. Est-ce que vous comprenez? Oui. Yes. You may not possess a weapon of any kind, firearm or ammunition. Vous ne pouvez pas posséder aucun âme, âme à feu ou bien à munition. You may not return to her residence for any reason. Ou pas qu'à retourner dans la pour aucune raison du tout, pas qu'à la caille. 
you may not be within 500 feet of her residence. Ou pas capable de ou pas c'est ou pas capable paraître à 500 pieds de Kai madame là. Do you understand? Est-ce que ou bien comprendre? Oui, me comprendre. Mais m'a gagne une question. Yes, I understand. May I ask a question? Yes, sir. Oui, monsieur. OK. Madame là c'est était dit me comme ça il était dit comme ça c'est pas il pas tirer les polices pour venir arrêter moi il tirer les polices pour te faire mouv venir la caille moi ça c'est pas il pas tirer les polices pour te venir arrêter moi c'est pas ça elle te dit c'est ça elle te dit the, the, she said that she did not call the police to get me arrested but to get me to go to my home that's what she said that may be but there is probable cause for your arrest at this time. C'est peut-être mais gain cause probable pour arrestation là qu'il Do you understand all of the conditions I placed on your release? Mais est-ce que vous comprenez toutes conditions moi mettre si yo là pour la pour lâcher là condition supposé suivre yo? Oui. Yes. Are there any other conditions the state would request? Est-ce que l'état a aucun autre condition encore que vous voulez imposer, demander? Non, Your Honor. No, juste. Good luck, sir. Bonne chance, monsieur. We have one more, Madam Interpreter. Yes, Your Honor. Sir, please tell me your name. Monsieur, dis-moi un nom, s'il vous plaît. Vakinson Célian. M'attendez? Vakinson Célian. Vakinson Célian. Two KPSs were issued for your arrest for failing to appear for court. Tu gagnes des arrestations, mandat d'arrestation, parce que vous partez, vous partez à venir dans le tribunal, vous êtes supposé venir. 21 CT 2225AO, a KPS was issued for your arrest for failing to appear on a charge of driving while license suspended. The government had arrestation that was made there because you were conducted until the license was expired. Your bond is $500, and I'll appoint the public defender's office. Bon, c'est $500, and I'm going to avocat. Défense publique là, sous dossier là. In 21 CT 2312, a KPS was issued for your arrest for failing to appear for a charge of no motor vehicle registration. Sorry. On l'a demandé à l'arrestation de mettre vous parce que vous n'avez pas de gain de machine ou vous n'avez pas de gain de registration. Are you still there? Yes, the interpreter is here. All right, your bond on that charge is also $500, and I'll appoint the public defender's office. A bond for Chaisa is $500, and I'll appoint the avocat public defense public last to the CIOLA. Your Honor, I have an offer from the state, but I have not had a chance to speak with the client using the interpreter. Juste moi qui ai une offre que l'État va et même pas qu'on a une chance pour moi d'expliquer et défendre là avec avec l'aide de une interprète. What is the offer? Qui offre lié? The offer, uh, the offer for both um, charges is withhold of adjudication as well as credit time served. Offre là c'est withhold adjudication et puis pour l'heure qu'elle déjà servi. Do you understand the state's offer for you? Est-ce que vous comprenez qui ça l'État s'est là offre ou là, monsieur? Vous pouvez répéter ce que vous dites encore, s'il vous plaît? What is it? 
So, so they are pending. What is it that you just, uh, can you repeat it again? Go ahead, Counselor. Again, Your Honor, uh, we do have a, a plea offer to address the alleged charges. And again, I haven't spoken directly with the client using the interpreter. I, I wonder if I could have a chance to do that before we address the But explain to him the offer. In open court? Yes. I, unless you don't want to. I'm, you have time now to do it, and we have an interpreter on the phone. Okay, um, we have an offer from the state. So the two charges that you have can be, you would plead no contest to those charges using this form. Uh, oh, sir, can you repeat that again? I could have to be right in the microphone. Um, so the offer from the state is a withhold of adjudication credit time served in order to resolve both of your cases here today. Pour y résoudre tous les deux cas là aujourd'hui, est à offrir ou pour withhold of adjudication avec crédit pour temps qu'on déjà servi. Do you understand? Yes. Est-ce qu'on comprend ça ça veut dire? Oui. Okay. Yes. Um, in order to resolve your case today, you're going to have to give up certain constitutional rights that are listed um, on this plea form. Pour qu'à résoudre car là je dis à droit ou bien quelques droits constitutionnels ou que on va pas abandonner gens qui écrit dans forme ça. Understand? Okay, pas de problème. No problem. Um, you have to give up your right to go to trial. You have to give up your right to have an attorney appointed in order to resolve the case today. Pour résoudre ça, il faut que vous abandonnez droit pour aller dans un procès tribunal. Faut abandonner droit pour gagner un avocat qui présent. Um, if you're not a U.S. citizen, it can subject you to deportation. Sous pas un citoyen américain, ça qu'a mettez où au capable sujet à déportation. Are you a U.S. citizen? Est-ce que vous êtes un citoyen américain? Non. Non. Um, so it can subject you to deportation, and if you are um, on probation, it can violate that probation. Ça qu'a mettez où sous route déportation? Et sous en probation, ça a violé probation. Um, so you can either resolve the case today, um, or there's bonds on both cases, Your Honor. Right. right. Yes. Both have bond, and they're only five hundred dollars. Okay. So you have a five hundred dollar bond on both of the charges. Um, you can have time to speak with an immigration attorney before accepting the state's offer here today, um, if you would like. So. So capable de faire ce qu'on connaît qui sauve les faits, soit que vous acceptez ça et vous faites aujourd'hui, parce que ou bien ou bien chaque cas ça vous gagne 500 dollars bon, souvent vous gagnez doit prendre temps au lieu que vous pouvez accepter aujourd'hui, vous gagnez doit prendre temps pour aller parler avec un avocat immigration avant que vous acceptez ça et vous faites là. Do you want to do that, or do you want to resolve it, or wait? Qui ça va faire? On va pas accepter ça au dos là pour résoudre les choses ou bien on va prendre le temps pour connait qui ça pour faire. Si me paye comme bonne laisse que m'a toujours besoin pour me faire ça. If I pay the money for the bonds, do I still have to do everything that you mentioned? Um no, if you pay the bond, you'll be um released today and then you can speak with an immigration attorney to determine the best a uh, way to resolve your case as well as an attorney from our office 
to discuss uh, the consequences and or benefits of accepting a plea offer. Si ou paye bon aujourd'hui hein et bien les ça y a metto dehors gain doit parler avec yon yon avocat immigration pour connait qui ça pour faire dans condition ça hein et pour ca parler avec yon avocat nan bureau nou an tou yo ka expliquer ou qui conséquence qui gagne nan bagay sa yo si que ou accepter sa yo dou la est-ce que vous comprenez Your Honor, we, um, Sir, I was going to record. Uh, you can try. Let's try it. We can get an interpreter on the line. Taylor May, on behalf of the Office of the State Attorney. Letitia George, on behalf of the Office of the Public Defender. Tyler Brands, Office of the Public Defender. For lunch. Good morning, Your Honor. This is Laura Bretagna, Spanish interpreter. The interpreter has already been sworn. Good morning. Good morning. I, this is Judge Bancom from the BRC. I have two cases I need your help with this morning. We're getting our first defendant in, and they're putting on the headsets. Now, let's see if we can make a connection. There is contact, Your Honor. Can you tell me your name, sir? Fidel Argueta. Fidel Argueta. Sir, you're here in 2021-MM2961 AO on charge of battery. I did review the charging affidavit. In this case, I did find probable cause for your arrest. I'm going to stay your bond in the amount of $500. Condition of your bond is that you have no contact with the victim in this case. Do not return to the scene of this location where the incident happened. 
Do not possess any weapons or firearms. Any weapons or firearms you have need to be turned over to law enforcement within 24 hours of, their, of your release. When appointing the public defender to represent you in this case, you have a good day, sir. Thank you. I don't have arms nor firearms. Okay. You just can't possess any while you're out on release. Have a great day, sir. Está bien, yo no uso. Okay, it's fine. I don't use them. How are you doing this Monday? Good to go. All right. Doing it. So it's closed? Good morning, sir. Can you tell me your name? Misael. Cover your face. Misael Mercedes Miranda Aguilar. Misael Mercedes Miranda Aguilar. Yeah. Sir, you're here in 2021 MM 2960 AO on charge of battery. I want to set your bond in this case amount of $1,000. Addition of your bond is you had no contact with the victim in this case. You're not returned to the location where this incident happened. You're not possessing any weapons or firearms. Any weapons or firearms you have need to be turned to law enforcement within 24 hours of your release. I want to appoint the public defender to represent you in this case. You're also here, you're out on bond in 2021-MM-163-AA on charge of criminal mischief and resisting officer out violence involving the same victim. The court's going to revoke that bond in that case. You want to set a new bond at $0. You want to appoint the public defender to represent you in that case as well. You have a great day, sir. Okay, gracias. Okay, thank you. I think that's my last one, Madam Interpreter. Correct? Have a great day, ma'am. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Can you tell me your name, sir? Uh, my name is Richard Real Amado, uh, but that's my secondary name. Um, my grandfather is Tarician, pronouncing his name as Christian. And my dad's name is Tarician, and my un uncle's name is Tarician, but my first biological name, since my other brother's name is Tarician, pronouncing Asian as Christian. I got, my dad got hurt a long time ago, but my, my secondary name is Richard, okay. Richard Real Amado. All right. Mr. Amado, you're here in 2021-MM2963AO on two charges of resisting officer without violence. I did review the charging affidavit. In this case, I did find probable cause for your arrest. State, is there an offer you'd like to extend to Mr. Armado? Yes, Your Honor. The offer was an adjudication credit time served on count one and a no information on count two. Thank you. Your Honor, he's not um, willing to accept the state's offer here today. Okay. Um, he's disputed. Um, yeah. All right, sir. I'm going to stay your bond account count one amount of $500. I'm going to release you on your own recognizance as account two. Thank you. Uh, my my day, situation sir. is the situation from a while back. Don't please don't stop, because there was a lady here before then. I work as a public defender. I was a watcher, and okay. I was ordained by the private priest guardian. I was a United States Church Mission right. Navy officer. All right, sir. Well, dude, we'll get you on to your next court date. From a long time ago, and they're trying to make well. them carry their cross. The other black dudes and the other white boy was innocent from all, from a while back. The officers were not officers at all. All right. The real officers never had no weapons at all. Okay. I work with the United States and the Church Mission Navy. All right. But that's the situation where you're standing at. Because uh -huh. there was a lady here before then, what I was talking about, uh -huh. not just seeing what the devil just did. Because he tried to flip it on me and he tried to hover. There's a devil that was in the shadows when they sprayed me. And okay. it wasn't that officer who sprayed me. All right. There well, was have a, a great guy day. Was standing there from a long time ago. A, this is a good defense. A long time have a great day, sir. All right.
Good morning, sir. Can you tell me your name? My name is Barry McMonagle. What happened to Redding? All right, let's deal with Ms. Redding first. Well, this is I got Mr. Barry here. Let me just go ahead and talk to him. Sir, you're here in 2021 CF 5056 AO on charge of criminal mischief. Oh, sorry. Dropping everything. Okay. Apologize. Apologize for that. Charge of criminal mischief, resisting a merchant and recovery of the merchandise and petty theft. I did review the charging affidavit in this case. I did find probable cause for your arrest. I'm going to set your bond account one amount of one thousand dollars. Count two one hundred. Count three one hundred. Condition of your bond that you not return to the scene of this location where this incident happened. You have no contact with any victims or witnesses. I want to appoint a public defender to represent you in this case. You have a great day, sir. All right. Let's talk about um, Garcia Redding, 2021 MM 2952AO for a violation of temporary injunction. I want to appoint a public defender to represent her. We'll waive the appearance, Your Honor. I'm going to set her bond in. I did review her charging affidavit. I did find probable cause for her arrest. I'm going to set her bond in this case in amount of $5,000. Condition of her bond that she did not have any contact with the victim in this case, that she comply with the injunction against her in 2019, DR 2377AO, as a condition of her release, and that she not return to the scene, the location where this incident happened. Tell me your name, ma'am. Doris Strickland. Ms. Strickland, you're here in 2021 CF 5060 AO on a charge of pay theft with two prior theft convictions. I did review the charging affidavit in this case. I did find probable cause for your arrest. I'm going to stay your bond in the amount of $1,000. Condition of your bond and not return to the scene of the location and not um, have any contact with any victims or witnesses from that case. I want to appoint the public defender to represent you in this case. Have a great day, ma'am. Good morning, sir. Tell me your name. Mm -hmm. Mr. Fillmore. Mm -hmm. Mr. Fillmore, you're here in 2021 MM 2949 AO on charge of trespass on property after warning and petty theft. Did review the charging affidavit. In this case, it did find probable cause for your arrest. It was an offer extended to Mr. Fillmore. Yes, Your Honor. An adjudication credit time served. No return to 7-Eleven and restitution to 7-Eleven in the amount of $11.02. Mr. Fillmore, did you want to take that state offer from the state of Florida? Yes, sir. Can you raise your right hand to be sworn in? Please saw me swear affirm the testimony you're going to give in this matter is the truth, the whole truth, not about the truth, so help you God. Yes, sir. All right, put your hand down. Sir, you're here in 2021 MM 2949AO. Your first charge is trespass on property after warning. That's a first degree misdemeanor. It's punishable up to one year in the county jail and a thousand dollar fine. You're also here for a charge of petty theft, which is a second degree misdemeanor, punch over to 60 days in the county jail and a $500 fine. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Do you want to enter a plea of guilty or no contest to resolve your case today? No contest. Do you understand by entering a plea of no contest, you're going to be waiving all the rights listed on the plea form in front of you? Yes, sir. Do you understand that in count two of the, the petty theft charge that you could be, if you're later found guilty of that offense, they could be enhanced your sentencing up to a third degree felony. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Are you under the influence of any drugs, alcohol, or medication? No, sir. Have you now or in the past been diagnosed with a mental health illness? No, sir. Has anybody forced, threatened, or forced you to enter this plea? No, sir. 
You know what I'm saying? My airing this plea if you're not a United States citizen and could subject you to deportation. Yes, sir. I did have an opportunity to review your charging affidavit. In this case, I did find probable cause for your, I mean, sorry, factual basis for your arrest and your, your plea. I did want to accept your plea of no contest, find your plea is freely and voluntarily entered. I want to adjudicate you guilty of the charge in both counts. I'm going to give you credit for the two days that you spent in the Orange County Jail with two days credit time served. One order that cost of, invest cost of sorry, restitution is paid of $11.02 to the 7-Eleven at 3000 West Colonial Drive. I'm going to impose a court cost of cost of prosecution in this case of $273. All those costs will be payable directly to the clerk within one year of today's date. You have 30 days from today's date to appeal your judgment and sentence in writing. Do you understand that, sir? Yes, sir. All right, have a great day. All right, you too, sir. Yeah, I need to keep these separate. Uh, All right, this is 2021MM2957AO. I'm going to appoint the public defender representing Mr. Mossery. Your Honor, may we request a reset to tomorrow uh, till tomorrow because there is a uh, pending offer from the state. Okay, Dexter, um, think you'd be in a position to speak with us tomorrow. All right, I'll reset um, twenty-four hours. See if we can resolve this case tomorrow. Okay. I had a question for Roden. Was he was he here on both cases? Because uh, I don't. You bought it in both cases? Not a charging affidavit for a possession of cannabis and then not a county warrant. Okay. All right. All right. This is Mr. Orlando Rivera. I'm going to this he's here in 2021 MM2954AO and also 2021 MM2955AO. I'll just reset him within 24 hours of his release from the hospital. All right, it's 2021 MM2958 AO. I want to point the public defender to represent Ms. Thompson. Your Honor, may we request a reset till tomorrow? We have a pending offer from the state. All right, I think she's going to be available to speak with us. All right, let's reset her for tomorrow and see if we can, tomorrow morning, I'll see if I can take her plea in the morning. Can you tell me your name, sir? Kenneth Burkhart. Mr. Burkhart, you're here in 2021 CO 423AO for a failure to appear warrant. Yeah. You just signed your warrant, set your bond amount $2,000. Well, as the state of Florida, they have an offer to resolve, Mr. Burke, we resolve your case? Yeah. Yes, Your Honor. It was an adjudication credit time served. All right, Mr. Burke, do you want to accept the county's offer of adjudication and guilt credit time served? Yes, sir. Can you raise your right hand and be sworn in? These solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're going to give in this matter is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Help you, God? Yes. You put your hand down. Sir, you're here in 2021 CO 423AO for a violation of the solicitation um, county ordinance. It's a second degree misdemeanor. It's punishable up to 60 days in a county jail and a $500 fine. Do you understand that? I sure do. Do you want to enter a plea of guilty or no contest to resolve this no case? Contest. With the, all right. Do you understand my enter a plea of no contest? You're going to waive all the rights listed on the plea form in front of you. Yes, sir. Are you under influence of any drugs, alcohol, or medication? No, sir. Have you now or in the past been diagnosed with a mental health illness? No. Has anybody forced, threatened, or coerced you to enter this plea? No. You don't say my area in this plea if you're not a United States citizen, it could punish, like sorry, could result in you being deported from this country. Yes, I did have an opportunity to review your charging affidavit and notice your notice to appear in your court file, so I did find a factual basis contained therein. I will adjudicate you guilty of the charge, accepting your plea of no contest, finding it freely and voluntarily entered. You credit for the two days that you spent in the Orange County Jail with two days credit time served. The court costs and cost of the court costs in this case are two hundred and twenty-three dollars. 
I'll give you one year from today's date to pay that money directly to the clerk in full. You have 30 days from today's date to appeal your judgment sentence in writing. You have a great day, sir. Okay, thank you. Can you tell me your name, ma'am? Stephanie Jones. Ms. Jones, you're here in 2021 MO 315AL on charge of open container. I did review the charging affidavit in your case. I did find probable cause for your arrest. I believe the city of Orlando is offering a withhold of adjudication and guilt and court costs to resolve your case. Do you want to accept that offer from the city? I can't hear you. Can you raise your right hand to be sworn in? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're going to give in this matter? It's the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So, if you got yes, ma'am, you're here in 2021 MO 315 AO on charge of open container. That's a second degree misdemeanor. Punishable up to 60 days in the county jail on a $500 fine. Do you understand that? What's that mean? I don't know. The maximum penalties for this charge you're facing is 60 days in the county jail and a $500 fine. Do you understand that? Yeah, I'll do the 500000 mile. Because you want to, oh. if you want to enter a plea, of, you want to enter a plea of guilty or no contest to resolve your case. No today. contest. I don't, I don't want. You understand by entering a plea of no contest, you're going to waive all the rights listed on the plea form that's in front of you. Yeah. Are you under influence of any drugs, alcohol, or medication? No, sir. Have you now, or in the past, been diagnosed with a mental health illness? Yes, sir. What was that mental health illness? I'm bipolar. All right. Bipolar, are you suffering? Sir. Okay. Are you suffering from any of the symptoms of your bipolar depression at this moment? So? Bipolar depression. No. Are you suffering from any of the symptoms of your bipolar depression right now? Yeah. I'm taking medicine. Okay. Are, are, there, are they to the point where they are going to they affect your ability to understand what's going on in the conversation we're having no. right now? And has anybody forced, threatened, or coerced you to enter this plea? No. Right. You understand by entering this plea, if you're not a United States citizen, you can't be deported from this country. Nope. I won't leave. Right. I did have an opportunity to review a charging affidavit in this case. I did find a factual basis contained therein. I want to accept your plea of no contest. Find your plea is freely and voluntarily entered. I want to withhold adjudication of guilt. I'll give you credit for the two days that you spent in the Orange County Jail with two days credit time served. Yep. Court costs, cost of prosecution in this case. Or two hundred and twenty-three dollars, or reduce those costs of judgment. Wait thirty days from today's date to appeal your judgment and sentence in writing. You have a great day, ma'am. I have Baptista bonded. Say. No, I, I, somebody told me they bonded, so I'm guessing I don't, and it doesn't look like, based on the description I had, that's Mr. Baptista in front of me. Tell me your name, sir. Oh, Kalino, sir. Sir, you're here in 2021 CF 5073AO on charge of trafficking in methamphetamine, possession of methamphetamine, resisting an officer without violence, and possession of drug paraphernalia. I reviewed the charging affidavit in this case. I did find probable cause for your arrest. I want to set your bond account one amount of $250,000. Count two, I want to stay the amount of $1,000. Count three, I want to stay your bond amount of five hundred, and count four, I want to stay your bond amount of five hundred dollars. Condition of that bond is that you're not possessing any drugs or alcohol without a valid prescription. Also, condition of your bond is that whoever is going to bond set bond for you or bond you out is going to comply with Florida Statute 903.046 sub 2 sub F and submit an affidavit to the court that after the funds used to bond you out. Or from not from no illicit activity or from any other drug related offense. You're out on bond. I'm sorry, you're sorry. You have an out of county warrant from Alachua County in 2020, CF 2405 
In that case, the Alachua County Judge sets your bond amount $25,000. I want to appoint the public defender to represent you in your cases. You have a great day, sir. Thank you, sir. Can you tell me your name, sir? Michael Rosario Chalmers. Mr. Chalmers, you're here in yeah, 2021 CF 4125AO for a charge of burglary of a dwelling. The judge signed your warrant. In this case, it's already found probable cause for your arrest. What? The, um, huh? Excuse me. I'm sorry. Go ahead. State, is your, are you planning to file a motion for pretrial detention in this case? It's not our intent at this moment, Your Honor. Say again? It's not our intent at this moment, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Chalmers is going to set your bond in this case in the amount of $50,000. Condition of your bond that you have no contact with the victim in this case, that you not return to the scene of the location. You're not possessing weapons or firearms. Any weapons or firearms you have need to be turned over to law enforcement within 24 hours of your release. You need to comply with the injunction in 2020 DR 2165 AO. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you in this case. You have a great day, sir. Your, your Honor. Uh, would you be inclined to lower the bond amount issue? My client is currently unemployed. Um, so I, was, I would ask that you lower the bond amount a little. Um, it's showing his last conviction is in 2016, Your Honor. Not based on this case. I'm not sure why this is even in my stack instead of in distress this morning as far as domestic violence. Oh. This is a case involving a relationship between the alleged victim and the defendant. He has an active injunction that's been active since like 2020. He has alleged in this affidavit for arrest warrant to have violated that junction at least twice. Okay. So I understand. This time. Good morning, sir. Can you tell me your name? Yeah, I'll be sure. Sir, you're here in 2021 CF5057AO on charge of armed burglary and possession of burglary tools. I did review the charging affidavit in this case. I did find probable cause for your arrest. Yeah. State, what are you asking me to do as to count one of discharge? Your Honor, due to the nature of count one, state is asking that you hold him no bond pending an Arthur hearing. Is it Kobe on point of public defender to represent you? No argument, Your Honor, but we do reserve the right to an Arthur hearing. All right, let's go ahead. It's count one. We'll hold you at no bond. Count two, one, two. Set your bond amount of $2,500. Addition of your bonds, you're not returned to the scene of the location. You do not possess any burglary tools. That you have no contact with any victims or witness for witnesses from this case or co defendants. You do not possess any drugs or alcohol without a valid prescription. You also possess no weapons or firearms, and weapons and firearms you have need to be turned over to law enforcement within 24 hours of your release. Have a great day, sir. Can you tell me your name, sir? Sir? Can you tell me your name? Andrew Ramon Jenkins. Mr. Jenkins, you're here in 2021 CF5072AO on a charge of pay theft with two prior theft convictions. Second. I did review the charging affidavit. In this case, I did find probable cause for your arrest. I'm going to set your bond in the sole count in the amount of $2,500. Condition your bond and not return to scene of the location and not possess any weapons or firearms. Any weapons or firearms you have need to be turned to law enforcement within 24 hours of your release. That you not have any contact with any victims or witnesses from this case. You're out on bond in 2020 CF 6484AO. In that case, the court is going to revoke that bond. When I said a new bond is zero dollars. Going to appoint a public defender to represent you in all your cases if not already appointed. You have a great day, sir. Can you tell me your name, sir? Gerald Johnson. Mr. Johnson, you're here in 2021 CF5065AO 
the charge of possession of cocaine, possession of drug paraphernalia, attempted destruction of evidence, resisting officer without violence. You're also here in 2021 MM 2959AO for a violation of a county ordinance. Did find probable cause for your arrest as to all those counts. I'm going to stay your bonds as set in your affidavits, your felony case, in the amount of $1,000, 100, 100, and 100, and I think it's 250. $500 as to your misdemeanor case. Additionally, your bond did not return to the scene of the location. Do not associate with any drug dealers. But you do not possess any drugs or alcohol without a valid prescription. I want to appoint the public defender to represent you in this case. You have a great day, sir. Are those conditions for both cases, Your Honor? Yeah. The conditions are for, yeah, both, conditions cases? Are for both cases. Okay, thank you. Good morning, sir. Can you tell me your name? Ashton Lang. Mr. Lang, you're here in 2020 CF 478 AO for a failure to appear warrant. The judge signing your warrant set your bond account warrant amount of $2,000, count three, 100, count, sorry, sorry, and count two, 100. You also have an out of county warrant from Broward County. The judge in Broward County set your bond amount of $5,000. You also have an out-of-county warrant from Monroe County. The judge in Monroe County sets your bond amount of $15,000. I want to appoint the public defender to represent you if you're not already appointed. You have a great day, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Can you tell me your name? Asnel Limperville. Say it again. Asnel Limperville. Sir, you're here in 2021 CF 5048 AO on three charges of attempted manslaughter with a firearm, one count of unlawful discharge of a firearm, and the last count is shooting into an occupied dwelling. State. I was struggling reading this, trying to find out how they identify him as a shooter. So I'm having trouble finding probable cause for these, these charges. When I read those, the, the witness in this case heard an argument between him and another female. Yes, Your Honor, I believe when law enforcement arrived, he was the only person on scene. Yep, but when the shooting happened, there seemed to be two, one other person there too. So I don't know, they, that was a shooter shooting at him and then leaving, or him shooting at them, and... Yes, sir. Yes, Your Honor. I understand. Can I have 24 hours, please? All right. So it's, it's about, I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you in this case, where we set you. I'm actually going to get to say 48 hours to uh, see if we can find some probable, like, see if there's any further information in this case. Is there, do, do I get a bond? Uh, this is like my first, like I've, I've never really been in trouble like that. Yeah, I know, but these are the facts of this case where somebody was actually shot or, or is, you know, pretty serious. So we'll, we'll get to you. We'll see you in 48 hours. So uh, another question is, um, let's see, actually, never mind. Right. So, uh, you speak to a public defender? Yep. These are attorneys here. You can, they can get a number. You can speak to them in between time. We get it figured out. Yep, I have two of them in here right now. All right. All right, this is 2020 CF 10326AO. Mr. Martin is here for a failure to appear warrant. Things are represented by the Public Defender's Office. We'll wait the appearance, Your Honor. All right, his bonds are set at none. Do remain at none. Give him in front of the division judge if he wants to have a bond here. So no resetting. No. Uh, I had Mojica Rivera as my next person. All right. Can you tell me your name, sir? Anyways, um, Jason Mojica Rivera, sir. 
Mr. Rivera, you're here in 2021 CF 5059AO on charge of burglary of an occupied dwelling. I did review the charging affidavit in this case. I did find probable cause for your arrest. We're going to state your bonds in this case, amount of $5,000. Condition of your bond that you have no contact with the victims in this case or any other witness. That you not return to the scene, the location where this incident happened. You may not possess any weapons or firearms. Any weapons or firearms you have need to be turned to law enforcement within 24 hours of your release. I want to appoint the public defender to represent you in this case. You have a great day, sir. Welcome. All right. You said Mr. Monserrat Rodriguez was in the hospital? Bonded. Bonded. Okay. Tell me your name, sir. Mr. Fair Pagan Rivera. Mr. Pagan Rivera, you're here in 2021 CF 5061 AO on a charge of aggravated assault with a firearm. Did refute the charging affidavit in this case. I did find probable cause for your arrest. I'm going to set your bond in this case amount of one thousand dollars. We're going to come with pretrial release supervision. That you have no contact with the victim in this case. You're not returned to the scene of the location where this incident happened. You have had no contact with any other witnesses from this case. Your Honor, in this Besides, case, what? I believe the scene of the crime is the apartment pool, which I believe he is also a resident at. Yeah. So. So I'd ask for. No, I don't think he. Does, I don't think he lives there. If I remember correctly. I live with my mother right now. I stay there, but since in this situation, I could go to my mother's house. Yeah. Okay. The address that I had for where on the affidavit, the front sheet and the affidavit address that was the scene of this call was not the same. So I figured he wasn't. He didn't live there. So, say go to him. Say at your mom's house. Don't go yes. back over there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You do not possess any weapons or firearms. Any weapons or firearms you have need to be turned to law enforcement within 24 hours of your release. Yes, sir. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you in this case. Okay. Thank Have a great day, sir. This All right. Good afternoon, sir. Can you tell me your name? Dexter Presley. Mr. Presley, you're here in 2021 CF. 5067 AO, on charge of grand theft. Yes. I did review this charging affidavit. I did find probable cause for your arrest. I'm going to state your bond in this case in amount of, actually, I'm going to set your bond in this case in amount of $1,000. Condition of your bond that you do not return to the scene of the location. You don't have any contact with any victims or witnesses. That you not enter any pawn shops. That you do not do any secondhand pawn transactions while you're out on release. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. State you have an offer. Well, actually, no, I'm not, because I forgot this. He's under sentencing in 2020. MM 9191 AO. Yes, Your Honor. In that case, I'm going to revoke and release you out on. Set your bond at zero dollars on that case. You get in front of Judge Jewett to figure out what kind of sentence he's going to impose on you. The sentencing, was, sentencing was set for the fifth. You need the hearing devices? I'm not hearing anything. I understand what you're saying. You do not understand? You can. It's somewhere. It's an echo I can't hear clearly. Okay. Your, your Honor, may, may we address, can we uh, request that uh, you not revoke, but just uh, set? Absolutely not. He's out on sentencing. He's been, on, he's been posting. He pled back in March of 2015. March 15th of this year, he's been out on sentencing and he's alleged to commit a felony while pending sentencing. He, he stole $1,000 of a money order. It's also a nonviolent offense. And the original he, crime for that, that defendant is out on bond on is uh, providing false identification to a law enforcement officer, another nonviolent uh, no. charge. So I would, I would request again uh, not to set the bond at none, but to just change the bond amount. No. I'm quite sure, Judge, you had a conversation with every judge has when you leave, you want to set your sentencing off, don't commit new law offenses. So if you'll start tell Judge Jewett about what sentence he's going to impose against you. Good afternoon, sir. Tell me your name. Douglas Roche. Mr. Roche, you are here in 2021 CF 5064AO 
on charge of possession of cocaine. I did review the charging affidavit in this case. I did find probable cause for your arrest. Mr. Roche, do you have a place where you can get mail? Yes. All right, you have an address that you can want to provide to the court? Yes. You have one of those little cards. Can you tell me that address? 1845 Plumtree, one word, P L U M T R E E Drive, Deltona, Florida, 32725. All right. Mr. Roche, I'm going to have you fill, put that address on that, that card that's going to provide to the deputy, to, to, to corrections. I'm going to release you in your own recognizance. Conditions of, I want to appoint a public defender to represent you. Conditions of your release, you're not possessing any drugs or alcohol without a valid prescription. That you have to get the notices at the address you provided to me. You got to provide an address to the clerks before you release from the jail today. All right. Have a great day, sir. You may want to keep calling the public defender's office every couple of weeks to make sure that you're not going to miss any court dates. Thank you, Your Honor. Yep. Tell me your name, sir. Michael Roberts. Mr. Roberts, you're here in 2021 CF 5071AO on charge of possession of Indian Mayor Ecstasy. I did review the charging affidavit in this case. I did find probable cause for your arrest. I want to appoint the public defender to represent you in this case. I'm going to stay your bond amount of $1,000. Condition your bond that you not possess any drugs or alcohol without a valid prescription. You're out on bond in 2021 CF 3398AO. Court's going to revoke that bond. Set a new bond at zero dollars in that case. And the public defender's already appointed to you on that case. Have a great day, sir. All right, tell me your name, sir. Junior Isaac Eugene. So you're here in 2021 CF 5066AO on charge of possession of cannabis with intent to sell and deliver possession of cannabis and possession of drug paraphernalia. They reviewed the charging affidavit and did find probable cause for your arrest. I'm going to set your bond account one amount of $2,000. Count two, I'm going to stay your bond amount of $150. Count three, I'm going to say stay your bond amount of $100. Condition of your bond is that you're not possessing any drugs or alcohol without a valid prescription. I want to appoint the public defender to represent you in this case. You're out on probation in 2020, CF 8086 AO, based on the on view violation filed by law enforcement in this case. I want to set your bond at zero dollars in that case. I want to appoint the public defender to represent you in that case as well. You have a great day, sir. Yes, sir. You too. If I can get this thing, man. There we go. All right, this is Mr. Robinson in 2021 CF 5058AO. Going to appoint the public defender to represent him in this case. The public defender to represent, represent her. I apologize. We'll wait for the appearance, Your Honor. All right, I'm going to stay her bonds in this case in amount of $1,000. All right, in amount of $2,500. Condition of her bond, does she not have any contact with any victims or witnesses, not return to the scene of the location where the incident happened? She does not possess any weapons or firearms. Any weapons or firearms she has need to be turned to law enforcement within 24 hours of her release. Does she does not possess any drugs or alcohol by a valid prescription. She's out on probation in 2020, CF 10 
643AO. In that case, based on on-view violation filed by the probation, filed by the law enforcement officer, the court's gonna hold her at no bond. Important public defender represent her in that case as well. Tell me your name, sir. Joshua Bruner. Sir, you're here for an out of county warrant from Seminole County, and for three counts, the judge in Seminole County set your bond at none. Your bonds will remain at none in this case. We get, I'm appointing the public defender to represent you. We'll get you on the Seminole County as soon as we can. You have a great day, sir. Does anybody have anything for the better of the order? Not from no, your honor. Right. George, I didn't hear you. Oh, no, your honor, I'm sorry. Page. Sure. All right. See everybody in the morning.